Hello everyone. Today we'll talk about how to create a job that will copy the source folder to a destination in a zipped format. So we'll take those files and compress them onto the destination. First you open up GHH Copy 360 Enterprise and you right click and say create a new job or you can start a new job down here. And we're going to select, we're going to skip the wizard, click finish, give that job a name. That name could be uh, zip file demo. And now we're going to, the source is going to be a local drive. So we're going to go ahead and just copy and paste my path here. I'm going to check the box that says copy as root folder. That basically creates a subfolder, uh, a folder called shared data onto the destination. And then here you select where the destination is going to be. In this case, we're going to be using a UNC path. It could also be a local path. So we're just going to go ahead and paste it in. I'm going to call it share data zip folder. Basically, it's just going to be a folder called zip. And in terms of copy options, we're going to select copy all. Basically, he's just giving you a warning that it's going to copy everything over to the destination in, in zip file format when you select that option, which is right here, it says files, files groups and compression. So we're going to go ahead and check that box. And then we want to configure this option. Configuration is very simple. It's basically asking you what's the max size before we split them to the next file. So let's say if we, in this case, we're going to select one gigabyte file. So that's the max size. So if we have a 10 gig file, if we're going to end up with a 10 gig zip file, it's going to basically split it up into 10 one gigabyte files. And here you give that file a name. We're going to call it share data. Dump. Just an example. Click OK. So now what's going to happen is it's going to take the data under this folder and it's going to copy to the destination in a zipped file format. The zip file name is going to be share data dump. And if this data is larger than one gigabyte, it's going to split it into gigabyte files, or single gigabyte files. Click OK. Now we need to uncheck this option because with, if, it, if you don't, it's going to give you a warning. It's going to say, nope, you, get a, you cannot have any of these features when you're doing a, a, a zip file format. So we're going to go ahead and click OK. Now we're going to be using four threads. Depending on your type of files, if you have smaller files, that would go up to six. But if you have files that are larger size, I would keep it up to four. Between four and six should be plenty. Go ahead and click Save. Now the job has been created. To trigger that job, you can right click on it and click select Start. We can also highlight it and then click Start Job down here. So the job is now queued. So if you click on where it says queued, you'll see it running. All right, so the job started. So far here, it's noticed there's 106 files. That's the number of files we've got. Total size is one, uh, one gigabyte and 117 megabytes. We're using four threads. So far it has processed six files. It's gone through six files and it's copied seven. Uh, so it's processed seven, it's copied seven. It is multi-threaded operation. However, when it reaches to a file that's larger in size, because it's going to require a lot of throughput, it freezes other threads to complete those larger files. And then after that, it will start copying them. The smaller files will be basically multi-threaded. So far, we have 90 files or 82 files remaining. As you can tell, sometimes it drops significantly, but that's because we're multi-threading them. So it's almost over. So that's why it's saying ETA is almost zero, just because it's significantly smaller number of files left. And it's almost completed. The job is completed successfully. It, it detected 106 files and it copied 106 files with 11 folders. Now we can go ahead and click close. Let's go ahead and look at that destination. So this is a destination folder here. We created a folder called share data zip. And we, if we open up that folder, you'll notice we ended up with two files. The reason why we ended up with two files is because the data was more, we specified the maximum zip file size would be a gigabyte. 
So basically, anytime it went by one by a gigabyte, it split it to the next file. If we wanted to unzip that data so we can look at it, we go back to GS Archive 360, right click anywhere and select Unzip File. And we click Browse, we browse to that location, and that's your unzip file. Now, as best practices, what we do recommend is either go to that destination server where this data is located locally and install GSH Copy 360 and try to unzip it through there, or copy the zip files down to this machine where you want to unzip it, just so that way it's not going through the network when you're extracting it. But for this example, since it's a single gigabyte, we're going to go through it. So we're going to go ahead and select it, click Open. Now it's asking you where would you like to, the folder path to uncompress this file. In this case, I'm going to make it somewhere local. And I'm just going to right click and say, I'm going to create a folder here. Now make a new folder. Uh, test unzip. And click OK. So now we selected where the source files that we want to extract it from, and this is where we want to extract it to, and we click on unzip. Now if you go to that destination, it's a, currently it's unzipping. If you go to that destination, test unzip, you should start seeing folders being extracted. It's still going, so we'll go ahead and just maybe let it go. Unzipping files is completed. Click OK. If you go look at the unzipped files, these are the unzipped files that we have. We have used some different characters just so we can test through it. Go look at it. Its properties is 106 files, which is what we read. This is exactly what we had. This is the original source file folder. Hopefully this video is informative to you and let us know if you have any questions. You can always reach us at support at gurusquad.com. Thank you again for watching.